Today uh, is really a special day. It's, it's the start of Holy Week. And so Holy Week is the week where Jesus obviously began. He, he entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. That's today, uh, you know, and he entered and, and made a, 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 the most epic entry in history. Never again will it happen. And for thousands of years, it was told that it would happen. And so this is, this is a day that we not only honor and, and, and relish and we just exalt Jesus because he, he is God and he is the Messiah. Make no question about it. This is what today is all about and, and every day. He is the Lord. And so he made it abundantly clear, not only through uh, prophecies all throughout the Old Testament, but him coming in that day was, was so remarkable. There's never gonna be a day like that in history again. And so that's what we get to celebrate today. And I just wanted to bring you in on this unveiled series because this is what Christ did. He really did uh, unveil. He, he opened our eyes. And in Luke's gospel, it says that he, uh, he gave sight to the blind. Now, we're not physically blind, but we couldn't see like God sees. And so when he unveiled or when he took the veil off our eyes, we now have the ability through Christ to see him, to understand him, to walk with him, to mirror him. And this is what it says in 2 Corinthians, and this is what this series is all about as we walk through week to week. It says in 2 Corinthians 3, 16 through 18, it says, nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the spirit, but where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or freedom. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord and being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. And so this is my prayer for all of us. Look, we're all, we're all being transformed by the Lord, by the spirit, by every time we take a step towards God. It doesn't matter if this is day one for you. Maybe today's the day you come to the Lord in salvation, as it says, when you turn to the Lord. Maybe that today's the start. But from that day until we meet Jesus, we're being transformed. God is making us into his image. We're becoming more and more like him. It's not perfect. We're gonna, we're gonna fail, but he will never falter. And he's gonna continue to transform you and minister to you and bless you. And so this is what this series is all about. But this is how it all began, was right here on Palm Sunday. And so today, that's what I want to talk about. In fact, the title of today's message is, is uh, He, Jesus, and Us. He and Us. And it really, uh, he really breaks this down in, in so many ways as you look at the story of Palm Sunday in Matthew 21 is he really speaks. Obviously, he elevates. The truth is elevated. The prophecy is elevated. Jesus is elevated. He is the Messiah. He is the Lord. And all of that, he unveils all of that, not only to the crowds, and let's make it clear, not just small crowds. This was great multitude upon multitude about multitude were there on Palm Sunday. And he unveiled his truth. He unveiled who he was. He unveiled the miracle of the Messiah right there that day, not only to them, but to us today. And so that's what we're, that's what we're seeing when we read Palm Sunday, when we enter into Holy Week, is the amazing truth that Jesus is the Messiah. Now let's, uh, let's read it uh, together real quickly before we get in there. Uh, Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 21. We're gonna start in verse seven. I'll go back to the beginning here in a minute, but let's start in verse seven. It says, they brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them and set him, Jesus, on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes or coats or cloaks, which is what you see down the middle here, on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And we had come into Jerusalem. All the city was moved, saying, who is this? Verse 11, so the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. So this is what happened. This is the triumphal entry. Many of your Bibles may title it. This is Palm Sunday. And I don't want to assume that we all know the story. In fact, when we were, uh, we were talking about getting some cloaks, and, uh, and we've had some from the different skits and dramas that we've done. So uh, when we were laying them down there, I said, I don't want to assume that anybody knows this story. Now, maybe you've heard it. Maybe this is new. I remember Easter over 20 years ago. I walked into the same doors you did and sat in the same chairs you did. And in the same room, I had never heard this story before. But today, God is unveiling truth to all of us, to every one of us. You know, it's, it's very significant. Um, now, in Jewish culture, when you're honoring the king, this is something you would see. Now, it doesn't happen all the time, but whenever their King David was instilled, he, would, he came in on a donkey. Uh, 
they laid their coats down. So it is, there is some symbolism. There is some tradition. There's some culture. Uh, but never had they done it in this way. Never did they lay their coats down, wave palm branches, and yell, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Never did they proclaim that any king except Jesus was the Messiah. Make no mistake about it, this is what they were doing. It's not like every Sunday morning they woke up and said, oh, let's go sing Hosanna in the highest. No, that never happened before. This is the only time in history where they acknowledge Jesus is the Messiah that was to come. This is the only time in history where Jesus marched in on a donkey, walked down from the Mount of Olives, walked through the beautiful gate, down the streets of Jerusalem, and the people responded in this way. It's never happened before, and it will never happen again. Amen. Because he is the Messiah. Amen. That's the first truth you've got to understand, is that, that he is going to unveil truth to us. The truth will be unveiled. It doesn't matter if it's um, Palm Sunday, if it's, if it's his resurrection, if it's crucifixion. The truth is going to be spoken. It doesn't matter where you're at in your heart. It doesn't matter what you believe, whether you had a good day or a bad day. God will reveal himself to the world. Amen. He is now, he is then, and he always has done so. And so it's so important that, that Christ is magnified, Christ is exalted, that he's lifted up, that he is worshiped because he is the Messiah. Not only that was to come, listen, this is like a, a prophetic time capsule. This is like all the prophecies that were, that were waiting to be spoken to the Lord were held in this, in this book, this living book, they were held. And then when Jesus came marching down, they were unleashed. And that time capsule was opened and the miracle of the Messiah said, Jesus is the Lord. He's God. He's the Son. So he unveils truth to us. The truth unveiled to the great multitudes that day and to us today, he is the Messiah. He is God. And now maybe you say, well, in culture, they, they have done this to other kings. Yes, but never do they preach prophecy or shout Hosanna in the highest or separate any king saying, this is the Messiah. Only Jesus was welcomed in that way. And it says great multitudes came. There was great multitudes already there. There was great multitudes following Jesus. There was multitudes in the temple. And Jesus came in on that donkey. And now we have palms here. These are palms. Now, at Westridge, these mean you're going to get beat. It happened in the lobby right after service. That's why we don't give them to you until after. We know you. But, but palms, palms are very symbolic. Not only in the Bible, but also in culture. So the people would wave these branches, but they would lay the branches down along with the coats all the way down the road. And this meant something. It meant that this was royalty. This was the king. This is someone you honor, respect. And he was riding a donkey, which also has symbolism in itself. So this morning, I wanted to share with you, like, well, why, why the palms and why the coats and, and why all these things? Did you know a palm tree takes 30 years to bear fruit? In America, that would be terrible, wouldn't it? Like, I need my fruit now. Like, put some stuff on that, make it produce fruit in a year, then I'd be happy. But, that's, but there's symbolism to that, because to be a rabbi in Jewish culture, and Jewish tradition, imagine they're waving the branch. It takes 30 years to produce fruit. You also have to be 30 years of age to be considered a rabbi or a teacher of the law, which Jesus was at age 30. A lot of symbolism there. A lot of foreshadowing. I, I could spend a whole series on, on shadows and foreshadows and, and stories that point to Christ. They call it Christophanies, where he appears in the Old Testament. There's so many things that we could share, but the palms symbolize that this is the Messiah. And Egyptian culture, which, which is cool, every culture has its own culture, right? But in Egyptian culture, they would wave palm branches at funerals because they believed that palm branches symbolized eternal life. Now, I think that's amazing and great and all, but it, it's so much more powerful when it comes from the Bible. Like culture is good, but it's not, it's not scripture. 
And Revelations chapter seven, I don't know if you've ever read this before. This is something that was unveiled to me, something that was shown to me as I was preparing for this, uh, this message. But here's what it says in Revelation chapter seven, verse nine. Now, context, we don't have time to preach all Revelation. That would be fun, but not right now. And, and Revelation chapter seven, these are all the saints that were, that were persecuted and killed for their faith. And now they're standing before Jesus as, as they're risen, by, they're standing before Christ. Look at what happens. After these things, I looked. And behold, a great multitude, which no one could number. That's a lot of people. All the nations, tribes, peoples, and tugs, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with robes, now watch this, with palm branches in their hands. They're waving the eternal one. Eternal life is found in this one. The same branches are waving as as Christ walked down the, the road Palms have a great symbolism of this is the Lord. This is the Messiah. This is the one. Palm branches were also symbolic of prosperity, that the king that was coming, they're waving and and honor and royalty, but it also meant that that, that this king was gonna bring prosperity to the nation, bring blessing to the nation, which we all know. God loves his people. He loves Israel is a nation that he loves his people. And not just, you're not blessed just because you're a nation, you're blessed because you follow God. And what an amazing unveiling that Jesus also grafted all us, all of us into that same family. We didn't deserve it, but he made it possible. It's all because of him. And what about the the cult? The cult's all through the Bible. And it, it, it shows different things. But the, the biggest thing you gotta know is when a king rode in on a colt, it meant that he was bringing peace. Now, when a king came riding in on a white horse, it meant war. And Jesus will come riding in a white horse in the days to come, and he's gonna bring war against the enemy. Although it really won't be war because he's just gonna say whatever and it's over. But on this day, he, brought, he rode in on a donkey. Why? Because he's bringing salvation. He's bringing grace. He's giving mercy. He's bringing blessing. He's bringing everything that he is to his people. You know, I could, I could go into a lot of different cult stories because there's a lot of them in the Bible. They're pretty fun. But one of them is, that points to Christ, is when Abraham was to sacrifice Isaac and he was walking him up to the sacrifice, he pre- prepared an altar to sacrifice his son because that's what the Lord told him to do. What did he do with Isaac? He put him on a donkey and walked him up, foreshadowing that this would be, now he didn't sacrifice Isaac. It didn't end up happening because the Lord provided a way, but it foreshadowed what God the Father would do with his son, that he would sacrifice his son and he would come in lowly on a donkey, just as Zacharias said. It's pretty amazing that Jesus forgets nothing. I don't know about you, but there's many scriptures I've read and like, oh, that's awesome. And then then it leaves my mind and then God reminds me. But the Messiah can't miss one scripture, not one. And Jesus, when he said it's fulfilled, he fulfilled every single one of them. Never again will this happen. Now, there may be some false Christ, and there may be some false prophets. The enemy will throw counterfeits. But let me tell you another unveiled truth. None of them will raise from the dead. None of them. This is what's so special about the Messiah, Jesus Christ, is only God has the power to raise himself from the dead. And so this is an epic moment, this triumphal entry. What about the coats? Well, the coats or the cloaks, some of yours say garments. But again, this symbolized honor and respect, dignity, royalty. You just didn't lay your coat down for anybody. But for this king, they laid their coats down. Imagine how many coats that was, multitudes on multitudes, laying their coats, laying their palms, laying them down. This is just puny. But it really doesn't matter how many. What matters is your heart. Jesus is God. He deserves every part of us, all of us. 
You know, one of the amazing things about this scripture that sometimes we miss is these great multitudes are, are laying their coats down. They're waving the palm branches. They're honoring the Lord. They're singing Hosanna in the highest. They're speaking prophetically that this is the Messiah. But then when the, when the people came that weren't there and they said, hey, who is this guy? What did they say? They didn't say the Messiah. They didn't say this is God. They said this is Jesus the Nazareth, a prophet, which is true. But why wouldn't they say this is the Messiah that was to come? This is God. You know what's interesting about uh, the Bible to me is it's relevant today as it was then. Because a lot of people, now we weren't there. This was thousands of years ago. But let me just tell you, there's many people today in this world, maybe even in this building, maybe watching online, that do the same thing as these people did. Oh, I believe God. And they may even say that, I believe God. I believe a higher power. I believe all these things, but belief isn't enough. Where were these multitudes seven days later? Where were these multitudes after he rose from the grave? Where were these multitudes when he was crucified? Many of them went from shouting Hosanna to shout crucify. I'm just here to tell you, look, if I could unveil anything to you, we've all been there. We've all rejected God. And we can't sit here and say, well, I believe that there is a God. That's not enough. This man laid his life down for you. He loves you. He made a way for you. He unveiled a way so you can see him, so you can know him. When he went in the grave for three days, he tore the veil so you can have access to him. Not so you can just say, oh yeah, I believe him. No, so you can follow him so you can know him, so you can be transformed, him, be transformed by him, so you can be a mere image of the one that you worship. You know, I used to be like many of you. In fact, I didn't go to church growing up, but when I started going to church, the Lord unveiled himself to me. Many people will come at Easter and Christmas, look, and I'm not, I'm not condemning or judging or saying that's bad. I'm just here to say there's more. There's more. God has something amazing for you. He has a plan for you. He has an abundant life that he died to give you. Just believing is not enough. Following him, giving your whole heart to him, your whole, your mind, your soul, your strength, every piece of you. And by the way, it's a blast. It is not constrictive. It is a blessing. But as you can see, there's, this is happening then. It's happening today. The same people that can scream Hosanna and yell and and identify that this is the Messiah. They know it here, but they don't know it here. And maybe that's where you're at today. Let the Lord speak to you. Let this truth move from your head to your heart. Let this begin to move. Follow him. See what he'll do. The second point I wanted to share with you today is Jesus and us, we've got to be genuine. We've got to be genuine. Matthew 21 through 6, 12 through 16 says, uh, so he, he just comes in, they're waving the branches, they're laying the coats down, they're singing, they're, everyone's praising, and then he walks through the, through, through the gate and into the temple. Verse 12 says, And God and drove out all those who were bought and sold in the temple, overturned the tables of money changers, the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, It is written in my house, this should be a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. Now watch this. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple. He healed them. But when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things, this, this perplexes me. They saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David. The children were saying, this is the Messiah and they were ignorant. They were so angry. For what? For Jesus being the king and him being the Lord and him doing wonderful things. They were mad. Do you hear what they're saying? And Jesus said to them, yes, I do. Have you ever read in your Bible that you say you proclaim? that out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, they have perfected praise. I love that Jesus is encouraging the faith of the children. He's encouraging the children. He's saying, yes, I'm proud of you for, for, for proclaiming that I'm the Messiah. I'm proud of you for worshiping me. I'm proud of you. Don't let this, this mob scare you or pressure you into it to not to, to denounce me. Have you ever had a bad day? 
We all have had a bad, this was a bad day for Jesus. It started out great. Walking in, praise, branches, donkey, awesome, amazing. You're the Messiah. Yes, I am. Praise God. Walks into his own temple and they're stealing from you. They're robbing you. They're taking from you. They're not praying. They're being deceptive. You know, if the Lord can unveil anything to you, it's this. See, look, by the way, these were religious people. These were the guys. These, they had all the titles. They had all the positions. They were the power of the church at that time. It wasn't called the church then, the synagogue. And they were hurting people. You ever been hurt by the church? Come on, I have been. Have people ever hurt you that said they were Christian? And I'm not saying, like, if they do something wrong, they're Christian or not Christian. All I'm saying is, is if somebody hurts you, you don't leave Jesus. That has nothing to do with Jesus. You don't see Jesus saying, oh, it's okay. You don't have to come to heaven. They were bad people. You don't see Jesus saying, oh, it's okay. You can be mad at my father. No, no, no. You see Jesus saying, that's wrong. That's sin. He flipped tables. He corrected them. And he said, this is not my house. This isn't my heart. This isn't who I am. And he corrected them. He corrected the sin. He honored the children. I love that as he's, as he's angry, and he's not sinning, by the way, he's angry and correcting. He then goes to some people that need help. And he heals them miraculously, supernaturally. Only God can do that. But he, he could have had a bad day like us. If you ever had a bad day and you just check out, you say, I'm out, I'm done. Well, Jesus had a bad day. He says, come here, let me heal you. Kids, awesome job. I love your singing. Thank you for your worship. Thank you for your praise. And scribes, you should know better. You should know better. Listen, if if you've ever been hurt by the church, please hear me. I'm not saying that's acceptable. I'm not justifying what happened, but here's what I am saying. Do not leave your faith because of people. Do not leave Christ because of people. Jesus didn't do it. The church didn't do it. This was somebody that made an error, possibly sinned. I don't know the situation, but I'm here to tell you it wasn't Jesus' fault. You've got to stay faithful. You've got to keep serving God. You've got to keep serving. Jesus loves the church. He died for her. He laid his life down for her. It means a ton to him. It needs to mean a ton, ton to you. Look, people are gonna make mistakes. You are, I am. But even if I hurt you, not intentionally, accidentally, if I do hurt you, I don't want you leaving your faith. I have nothing to do with your salvation. I have nothing to do with your freedom and your healing. But as a person, as a human being, I can say, I'm sorry. Let's work it out. But don't blame Jesus. Don't put that on Jesus. He's perfect in every way. So if God can unveil anything to you, maybe that's where you are. Maybe that's why you're running from church. No, please hear me. That was people. This is Jesus. He's perfect. He's amazing. He's God. He's holy. He's king. He's Lord of lords. He knows what's right. And he knows your situation, your circumstance. Don't you leave him. Finally, Jesus and us obey what he... Obey and watch what he does. I love the start of the triumphal entry. Let's be crystal clear. God doesn't need us. He doesn't. But he chooses you. God made the donkey. Does he need you to go get the donkey he made? Or could he make the donkey just fly over? Absolutely. Cool Hollywood movie. That'd be awesome. But the amazing thing is, is Jesus goes to people like you and he goes to people like me and he says, hey, I want you to be part of this amazing kingdom. And so watch this. Let's read it together. Uh, We're gonna start in Matthew chapter 21, verse one. It says, now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethage at at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village opposite you. Immediately you'll find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, does this get easier at 88, Juan? I'm just wondering. (laughs) And if anything says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord will need them and immediately he'll send them. 
All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, behold, the king is coming to you, lowly, sitting on a donkey, a colt, the full of a donkey. This is Zechariah 9. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. And then it goes into the story we just read. Listen. The disciples were part of this amazing miracle of the announcement of the Messiah. God chose to use people like you. This is what I mean. You've got to be obedient. I don't know what you would have done if Jesus said, hey, I want you to go to the town opposite and you're going to find two donkeys. You're going to find a colt. You're going to find a donkey. You're going to, you're going to find the donkey I, that's for me. You're going to go. And you, how many of you would have walked into the town opposite exactly like Jesus said? You would have been like, mind blown. But that's who God is. We can't define supernatural things. We can't define miracles. We can't define the things that only God can do, but you can be part of it. This is why it's so important that you obey. A lot of people will say, well, I've never seen a miracle. Look, you will see a miracle if you're obedient and you follow God. I can't tell you when or how, otherwise it wouldn't be a miracle. And you don't want me defining it anyway. I, he's much smarter than I am. But I'm just, say, I'm just here to say, even if you don't see a miracle, your salvation is enough. Amen. But we have an amazing God. You're gonna see things in your life. Keep following him. Keep obeying him. Not only that, but Jesus isn't stealing. Like He's not saying stealing is okay. Right, they go and they said, take him. And if they say something, then, then this is what you're to say and they'll give him to you. So it was a gift, it was a blessing. It would be like me going, getting in your car. How many of you know you're going to say something if I get in your car and I start to take it? And by the way, I'm going to pick the nicest one out there. That's never been written. Oh, that's not possible, is it? It got here. But, but you're going to say something. And the Lord knows that they're going to say something. He's saying, if they say something, it's okay. Just tell them the Messiah needs it. Done. Awesome. Don't try that at Walmart when you get out of here. This was a one-time story. It's not repeated in Scripture, right? But all I'm saying is, is God is going to do things like that in your life. It's not going to be the same exact miracle because this will never happen again. But he's going to do, we get to be part of this amazing kingdom. And we're not serving Jesus so we can see things. We're, see, we're serving Jesus because he's the king, because he's the Messiah, because he deserves our praise. He deserves our worship. He deserves our lives. And along the way, you get to serve this great God. And because you're serving a great God, you're going to see great things. You don't have to check the boxes. You don't have to come just at Easter and Christmas. You don't have to do a thousand good things. Because when you, when you begin to look in the mirror and you begin to seek God and walk with God and grow with God and let him transform you, guess what? Those things will happen naturally. You'll be good because he's good. You're, you're staring at the good itself in the mirror. You're letting him transform you. Good's gonna come out of you. It's not something you have to legalistically do. It will be you. That's why this is beautiful. Let God transform you. Look, obey him. Just like he commanded it happen. And because of it, we have the messianic triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Because of it, we have the Messiah. Now, again, God didn't need us, but he chooses to save you. He chooses to forgive you, and he chooses to use you as part of his greater kingdom. What an honor. We don't deserve any of that. What an honor. God made a perfect world. We messed it up. God had a perfect relationship with us. We messed it up. And here, he tore the veil and made it all right with his own doings without any of us. That's who you worship. This isn't legalism. This is the biggest blessing you could ever have. Amen. And today, if you're, maybe you're one of the, you're like one of these others. Maybe you're lip service. I believe God. Are you following him? Now's the time. Come be part of this amazing kingdom of God. Don't just say it, live it. Watch and see that God won't use you to do amazing things. And don't try to define what they are. Let God do that because it's always better when he does it anyway. But follow him, serve him, obey him. Watch and see. The Bible says it this way. Taste and see how good this will be.
I'm so thankful, not only that he came, not only that he got on that donkey, I'm so thankful that Jesus was intentional, that his love for us came before our love for him. I'm so thankful that he died for us, he paid the price for us, and he tore open the veil so we could see like he sees. Why don't you stand to your feet, I wanna pray with you. Lord, I just pray for every person, including myself in this room. Lord, I pray for those that are listening online. Lord, how great is it that your word goes throughout all the world in an instant today in our, in our world. So thankful that your truth can be exalted, Lord, that, you're, that you are the Messiah, that you are God. That needs to be spoken all over the world. So thank you that through my voice, but because of you, People are hearing this all over the world today. Lord, if there's anybody in this room today that they've been playing lip service, they haven't been real genuine, they haven't been real, they've been toting the line of, I'm a Christian, but I don't want anybody to know. Oh, Holy Spirit, speak to them. Speak to them, Lord. Lord, if there's anybody here listening that hasn't given their life to Jesus, they know there's a God, they just, they haven't trusted you in that way yet. Today's the day. Today's the day. I can't save you. Nobody in this room can save you. Only the one, the Messiah himself can save you. He's waiting for you to say, Jesus, I'm making you Lord of my life. And I'm sorry. I've been trying to do this without you. Watch and see what he does. And Lord, for those of us, Lord, we, we need to be more engaged into your work, God. We need to be more kingdom focused. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Let us look in that mirror and become more transformed, more and more like you. God, we love you. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That you are who you are. Your name is above every name. You're the Lord of all lords. And God, Hosanna, you deserve to be exalted. You are the highest and the greatest, the Lord of all lords. And we worship you. We thank you for making away and unveiling to us a relationship that we messed up. In Jesus' name, everyone said. If that's you today, tell somebody. Uh, you know, it's interesting to me. I, 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 don't, I haven't said this yet, but everything you hear every week, whether it's from the stage, the music, this, even my voice, you know, we made a change a few months ago. And so the person that's mixing his service is in Brazil. And I love that God has made technology the way it is. But I just want you to know that even though that seems like it shouldn't work, right? A lot of times in our life, we, we say like, God, this just can't work. I'm too messed up. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not too messed up. You're not too far gone. And although it seems impossible, it's completely possible through Christ. It is totally possible that you can be a man or a woman of God, even though before you walked in today, you maybe have done some things that, that didn't honor God. You start today and say, God, I want to, I'm, I'm making you Lord of my life. See what happens. See what happens. Go plug in a light bulb. See what happens. Get water baptized. See what happens. Start obeying God. See what happens. Look, this is not constrictive. This is so life-giving. This is the abundant life he died to give you. God bless you. Thank you for worshiping with us. It's a joy to have you. It's an honor to lead you. But more than that, it's, it's so fun to worship this guy. He's, he's so amazing. Let's worship together.